Hello YouTube, we got yet another video tutorial. This time we're going to be going over video card and CPU overclocking. Now, clock gen is for CPU overclocking. This is for when we get to CPU overclocking. And I have three links on my site that go to EVGA Precision. You have to be a member to get this on the EVGA site, but I'll just give it to all of you. This will work if you have an Infin NVIDIA card of any kind. It also does internal clock testing, and then we have ATI tool. There's two versions of this: the beta 4.27 and .26, which is for both ATI and NVIDIA cards. Only the .26 is for both. The .27 will only work for ATI cards, I bet. I'm not sure since I have an NVIDIA card. And Reba Tuner. This is for NVIDIA cards, but it'll also work for ATI cards. So right now, since I'm going to put the, well, since I got the links up on my description and how to use clock gen, which it also has a readme with that, and yeah, you really want to be careful with it. With EVGA Precision, you open this up, and you'll have something like this. Now, this is how I overclock. It'll give you a little dialog here saying what this does. memory clock it's only on, on uh, shader is only available on the 8 series and memory clock yeah you so this is how I would overclock I would just crank this up and you don't do this you just crank it up little by little but since I already know what my limits are I'm just gonna set it there and watch this uh, 870 and then fan speed, we're going to crank this and max it out. And we're going to hit apply. And then you can check the options. This is really cool. Start with Windows. Start minimized. Settings override tracking mode. Don't know what that does. Monitoring. You can monitor the GPU temperature. The frame rates. And you can put in OSD. Show on screen display. And what that will do is when you're playing a game it'll give you an on-screen display of it and it'll be in the little uh, right corner and it would be important that you put GPU temperature and that you know what your video card can go up to safely and then you also have this which tells you about your BIOS, your onboard memory, display driver, display device, your video card and whether it's in SLI mode or not. You should know some of that anyways. Now, since we got this maxed out, you can always default it, but you can test. Pass clock testing. Now, you see what testing does is it runs an internal instantaneous stress test to check to see if the settings are safe or not. If you go too high, it'll start acting really funky, and to fix that, you just restart. So, no damage will be done unless you got a really old, crappy video card. Not insulting your video card, but it might be true. Now, uh, we got ATI tool, if you got an ATI card. See, the clocks still remain the same, so that shows it works. You can go into properties and see the fan settings, memory timings, voltage. Now, overclocking, this tells you about your video card. Apply clock immediately after moving the slider. Use clock safety range, this is important if you know your limits. Artifact scanning, very important. Just set the settings here. Temperature monitoring, you definitely want to set this to something uh, good. You want to monitor your temperature. You have gamma control, which makes your screen brighter or darker. Startup. 3D detection, when it's when it detects something that's a 3D, uh, that uses 3D rendering, it'll make a sound or whatever you want it to do. Driver tweaks, not available on NVIDIA card. And play sound when loading uh, profile via hotkey and limit log file size. This is if you want to know the temperature. And change the PCI card latency. Probably shouldn't mess with that. Okay, so this is and another option here is you don't ever press these unless you got an ATI card. Trust me. Your video card will crash and you'll have to restart. Plus, you'll start getting artifacts all over your screen like crazy. Scan for artifacts. It'll run an artifact scan. And if you see any little yellow particles here, you should stop. But you should detect those anyways. 
It doesn't detect them when you're doing the Fun Max Core and Fun Max Mem, which is exactly why you shouldn't do it. You could probably, well, your video card won't die that way, but if you have an old crappy one, like I said, it might. See? It's slightly unstable. That's probably because my CPU and uh, everything is overclocked. I see this huge jump in temperature. This is the highest my card can go. This is what my card's usually at. Just a slight bump. But you saw artifacts there, which means this overclock supposedly isn't stable, but it's because my CPU is overclocked too. And if it doesn't show up in games, you probably shouldn't worry. But if you get artifacts like crazy like that, then you should worry. Definitely. Now, here's your last thing. Reva Tuner. When you go to Reva Tuner, you'll have all kinds of cool options. Specifically for NVIDIA and uh, ATI cards. Power user, you can uh, mess with all the registry settings. About, links. So, this is what we're going to do. You can set, reload your display driver. Hardware monitoring. And this is what it does. <laughs> but uh, Precision already does some of that. Plus, it has an on screen display. You have a graphic subsystem uh, report. It tells you all about this crap. Um, probably you don't want to know, but you got your right, uh, refresh rate settings, low, le uh, low level settings. We're just going to set the fan to max. Enemy strap driver, you don't really need that unless you're kind of an advanced user. System settings, this is where you can overclock. Now, link clocks, we might want to go down on this just by 5 megahertz to see if it stops the artifacting. Uh, fan, max, compatibility. You just set this in standard 2D mode because it doesn't matter. Okay, not low power. Don't touch that. Okay. And then you can mess with your direct draw settings. This doesn't matter at all. Pre render limit. So it's got all this good stuff. Uh, there's also another program you might want to try called the Enhancer if you want to mess with kind of uh, crap like this. So you got reset all the driver settings, custom display modes, desktop and overlay color settings. If your color looks like crap, then you want to fix it. So that's good. Now, we're going to go over CPU overclocking, and to do this, I'm just going to show you a couple pictures since I'm not actually going to reboot, just to show you how to overclock because I don't have a camera. <coughs> now, you'll have a BIOS on your uh, motherboard, and every time you restart, it'll probably want you to hit a certain key to go into something like this. It also comes in different flavors, like this, and this. This is what mine kind of looks like. I usually go to uh, boot, jumper settings, and then I set my uh, CPU multipli uh, multiplier and my RAM uh, frequency. So yeah, you should be careful on the CPU multiplier. And if you want to find out how, how you can overclock, you just open calculator. And a good overclock would be uh, 30%, so you get 3.20, which is what mine is. Uh, 3.20 and then times 30 percent oh I was fucked up but 3.20 times 30 percent damn it so 30 percent of 3.20 equals damn it okay well it's not working for some weird reason 3.20 times 30 percent okay there we go 0.96 so 0.96 you see that <clears throat> that is 960 megahertz or now if you didn't get that it's 960 megahertz that's what it is if you add 0.96 to 3.20 this is what you get oh wrong one but I don't know what the hell's wrong with it today, but plus not um, okay. Three point twenty. You always put a point after if it's just uh, if this is gigahertz and megahertz is after the decimal. You put 
point nine six and it equals four point 